some exciting news for you. Sundays throughout the summer, we will be joining together in the upstairs youth room at 10 a.m. during the Christian training hour for a time of teaching that is relevant and specifically designed for us. This year, we have invited some incredible speakers and have planned amazing topics that will help you grow in your walk with God and will help you live a successful life. Now, we know that mornings can be hard for some of us young adults to wake up and get out of bed, but don't worry. Breakfast will be on us. So do whatever you have to do to make sure you're going to be a part of this powerful time of teaching and growth. We look forward to seeing you at the LYA Summer Series. Hi, my name is Leslie Carpenter from the Music Ministry of the Peninsula Pentecostals and I have a special announcement for you. Have you signed up for TPP's Got Talent? It's going to be held Friday, June 24th at 7 p.m. here at the church. This is going to be a night where the students and children of TPP get to showcase the talents that God has given them. We believe that God has given them giftings and we want to encourage them to use those talents to bring God the glory. We want the whole church to attend. Also, think about the opportunity of inviting your family and friends for this special talent show. Talents can include anything from singing, playing an instrument, to memorization and signing, painting and drawing, and really the list goes on. Whatever your talent is, we want to see it. Individual and group presentations are welcome. Just a reminder, we need all children and students to sign up by this Thursday, June 16th. Here's the registration link. This night is going to be fancy, so dress up for your Sunday best. So sign up, because we look forward to seeing you at TPP's Got Talent. It's hard to imagine where I'd be without you. The truth is, I've learned so much by simply watching you. I've learned what it means to care about people and put others before myself. I've learned how to live a life of integrity and have the heart of a servant. I've learned to honor God in all I do and seek His will for my life. Thank you for the discipline I deserved and the grace I did not. Thank you for guiding me, encouraging me, and picking me up when I failed. Thank you for living out your faith and showing me how to live out mine. As I look back, I can see moment after moment where your strength, your wisdom, and your love made all the difference. There's so much of you I carry with me. Memories I treasure and lessons I cherish. Today, Dad, I want to say thank you and let you know just how much I love you. Happy Father's Day. Good morning. Welcome, all you fathers. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for coming out and worshiping with us today. We are so excited. That's it. Let's go ahead and give a big round of applause and a hand to all you fathers out there, all you dads. You deserve it. Come on, let's give it up for our dads this morning. Thank you so much. And we just want to say thank you. And as a token of our appreciation, if you didn't stop by the booth in the way on coming in, stop out there, grab yourself a pair of socks if you're a dad. That's our way of saying thank you so much and a little token of appreciation. I know my father, he got a pair of socks a couple of years ago. He texts me every day. He's got them on today. He texted me this morning and he says, I got my socks on. And so thank you all so much. And also, if you go out to the right there in the foyer, there's a little photo booth. Uh, make yourself a memory today and let's enjoy our fathers. God bless you all. Amen. 
We're going to begin to pray at this time before we enter this service. So you can join me in praying for the service. God, in our worship service, we're asking you to move. We're asking you to come. We worship you right now. We have one God and Father who is above all, in all, and through us all. We worship you as God. We worship you as Jehovah Jesus, our Savior. And today, we specifically worship you as our Father. We have been adopted as children into the family of God, where you have become our Father, and we worship you. Whatever backgrounds we have, whatever we've come through, we have different family situations and demographics, but one thing that we can all agree on is that you are our Father. You're good. You are a good Father, and we worship you as your children today. As your children, we ask you to, to give us the things that we need. We ask you to provide for the needs that we have, to do the miracles that only you can do, to give us the things that only you can give today. You are not withholding anything from us. You will not hold back any good thing from your children. And Lord, we believe that. We have faith to believe it. You're not just going to work unexpectedly. We are having an expectation this morning that you're going to you're gonna do what you want to do and you're going to meet us here. You're going to move off of our faith. I pray that our faith would arise. Let faith arise from every believer that is in the house today. For every, from every believer that is on their way, I pray that faith would be in the house. God, I pray that the people that come into this place, all of us have different needs. Some of us need your, your grace and your peace and your mercy. Help us to realize that all these things come from your right hand. All these things can be found in the presence of God. Let us not go to other places for them. Let us not look unto men. Let us not look unto the things of this world or programs, but let us look unto you, the author, the finisher of our faith, that one that holds the whole earth in the palm of his hands, the one that owns a cattle upon a thousand hills. It says in your word that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. We are all just part of your great earth, God. We are all just part of what you're doing. You hold the whole world in the palm of your hands. Today, God, we recognize you as our Savior, as the, the one that created all things, and we're, we are coming back to you to give you glory. We are coming back to your throne to worship you. So can you here this morning lift up the name of Jesus? Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that he is Lord. We confess, God, that you are Lord. We confess that you're good. Inside you, there is no darkness. You are the light and you are the light of the world. I pray that your light would shine among men here today. Let your light so shine, God. We take the bushel off. We pray, Lord, we are the church, a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Today, God, we lift up your name as only the church can do. We lift up praises unto you. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, we praise, honor, and glory forever. God, move in this service. Let your kingdom come. Let your throne be established. Have your way. We submit unto you. We get rid of ourselves. You increase as we decrease. More of you and less of us in this service. We want what you want for us. You are the all-wise God. Your stre our, our strength is not even close to your weakness. Whatever you want to do, God, we trust you because you are the only wise God. Because your way is better than our way. So we submit unto you today that you would have your way and that you would do what you want to do. Whatever heaven mandates, let it be so, let it be done. God, we are subject unto you. And Lord, we pray that you would move in every aspect of the service. From this prayer right now, to the singing of the songs, to the taking up of the offering, to the preaching of your word, and to the altar call. We pray that you would move in every aspect, because every aspect is important. And today, God, we align with that. We pray that we say, let it be done, let it be so, in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Church, let's take a few more moments to just open up our hearts to the Father. We've come into your house today, Father, to lift you up and to bless you. We want to acknowledge you, Lord, that you've been there faithful from the beginning. We want to praise you and bless you and lift you up. We want to acknowledge that you alone are God. There is none beside you. You really are the everlasting Father. We give praise and honor to you. All of it is yours. All of it belongs to you. And we've come into your house to meet with you. We want to connect with you. God, we want you to pour out your spirit in this place. Let there be a release of your power among us, your children. Let your spirit move, Lord God, upon our hearts. Let the breath of God be at our back today. In the name of Jesus, we have need of you. Oh God, we desire you. We inquire of you today, God. Our petition comes before you. Bless this house today. Bless your people today. Pour out today, Lord God. We need your love, Lord. Fill our hearts with your love. Fill our hearts with your presence, God. Manifest yourself in this house. Let there be freedom and liberty. Let there be a total takeover of your glory among us, Father. There is no one else that we can come to. There's nobody else that we can turn to. There is no one else that we desire except you. Pour your spirit out and draw us, Lord. Draw us into your presence. Draw us, O oh God, into the holy of holies. Bring us into the place, Lord, where we're intimately connected with you. Nothing else matters. Nothing outside these walls matters. Nothing in the world matters right now except for the moment that we're offering up to you. I pray for your will to be done in this service today. I pray, God, that you would use Pastor Arango. Give him the words of life that will inspire faith, hope, and love in our hearts for you, Jesus. Let the truth be told today. Help us to embrace the truth. Help us to recognize the truth. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear today. Let your word take root in our hearts. We want to be founded on the rock so that when the storms of life come they cannot move us but you're the one that gives us peace you're the one that gives us joy you're the one that allows us to walk in true love and power you are the almighty God of whom we bear witness today let our testimony be true Father, I pray that you would break every chain, that you would liberate every bound soul, that you would bring healing to every broken heart, God. Let every heavy burden be lifted up off of your people, every worshiper that's come, God, in spirit and in truth. I pray that you would have your way. And we come into agreement right now for your will to be done. Whatever it is that heaven mandates in this moment, Lord, we say yes. Whatever heaven has sanctioned in this season of our life, we come into divine agreement with you. And we say yes, let your will be done. Pour out in this place. Bless and move, Lord. Remove everything that would hinder us from being close to you. Wash away every sin. Bring conviction from the purity of your presence, oh God. And let a sense of righteousness begin to draw us deeper and deeper into you. Nothing that this world has to offer can compare to what you have and who you are. So let our focus this morning be on you. Hallelujah. Church, come on. Somebody pour out to God this morning. It's not too early. We give you the glory, God. We magnify you. You are the Holy One. You are the King of Kings. Hallelujah. God, you said that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let your freedom be poured out. Shout it out. 
Praise the Lord. Welcome to church this morning. The King of Kings is definitely inside of the house. And I know that it, it's a wonderful time for us to lift our voices and our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. It's welcome, obviously, to our, uh, uh, this day to our Father's Day service. And we're going to have an amazing time. But what we're going to do right now is we want to point everybody's eyes to the Almighty Father. The Bible says He's one God and Father of all. He's the Father of the fatherless, the protector of the widow. He says, I'm going to be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters. It is a wonderful day when you can come underneath the Father's hand. And so we're here this morning to give Him praise and worship. John chapter 4 verse 23 says, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. Have you come here to give God glory and worship the true Father? If that's the case, lift your hands in the building and at home. Give God glory on this Father's Day. He deserves the worship. Son for redemption, 
price for me, my heart. And I don't have a contest for that kind of love. I don't understand. I can't comprehend. All I know is that I need you. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. him right now. Hallelujah. God, I give you glory. I give you honor, God. Oh, it's because of you we have our existence this morning. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. As you make your way back to your seats. You know, I'm so thankful we have a good father. God's been good to us. Amen. You know, so many people today are honoring their fathers throughout this great country here in the United States. But, you know, when we go back to the beginning, you know, in Genesis, when we go back to the beginning, it's because of God that we're here. The good father, our real father. And because of that, we want to honor him. People are honoring their fathers in the natural. But this morning, we're going to honor our father because he's been so good to us. Amen. When you think about it, he's been awesome to us. So I want to give everybody the opportunity this morning to honor our father. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. See, and the thing is, is we all understand that, you know, when we honor our Father, because first of all, we're being faithful with our tithes that already belongs to Him. And then we decide that, hey, you know, God, I'm giving my tithes because that belongs to you. But I want to honor you also because I love you and I want to go above my tithes and I want to be a blessing to the kingdom because I love you and I want to give an offering. 
So we want to encourage you today to be faithful in your tithes and also to honor the Lord with an offering this morning. And then, you know, if you want to take it to another level, you know, because sometimes when we honor our fathers, you know, some of us woke up, maybe some of those fathers woke up this morning and got a a nice necktie. But then there was another package there and, and maybe they got some socks. And then maybe they got something else and maybe they were even, you know, fortunate later on the day they may have a meal fixed for them. But, you know, I, in the spiritual, we, we're going we're to give the tithes belong to the Lord. And then we're going to also give a love offering. But if you want to take it up another level, if you made a vow to, to God saying that we're going to be faithful to keeping the dream alive because we want to bless the kingdom. If you said that you want to also be a blessing to missions, we want to give you the opportunity to keep your vow and honor God in what you said that you would do. So this morning, as we all stand, and those that may be listening online, we want to give you the opportunity to honor the Lord as well this morning with your substance. Because we already know, we say it all the time, that everything that we have belongs to God. Even the clothes that's on our back is His. The automobile we came in is His. But I'm so thankful that He loves us enough to say that I trust them what the blessings that I gave them because I know that they are going to work in the kingdom and support the kingdom. So as the ushers come forth this morning, and we're going to give everyone an opportunity because I see smiles on people's faces, and I just know we're all going to give him honor this morning because we know that giving is a part of worship. So God, we come before you right now to worship you in our giving. Lord, we're going to honor you with, Lord, first, the tithes is yours, so we're going to give that because that belonged to you. But God, we're going to honor you with an offering that lets you know that, Lord, we love you. That's above the tithes. For God, we understand that if it wasn't for in Genesis 126, when you breathe life into us, we wouldn't even have an existence here this morning. And God, you've been a father to us so many times, and you've blessed us. And this morning, we want to honor you in our giving. God, I pray that you will bless everyone that gives, Lord, as they step out on faith. Lord, understanding that if they, Lord, just bless your kingdom and give unto you, that you will make provisions for them. For, Lord, you are our shepherd that we shall not want. So, God, we put our trust in you. Bless your people, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to march this morning. Let's give cheerfully. Let's honor our Lord this morning, uh, our Heavenly Father, for he's been too good for us not to give him honor in Jesus' name. Happy Father's Day once again. Man, we are having an awesome time today. Real quick, I want to tell everybody in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15 in the New Living Translation, it says, you may have 10,000 teachers, but you have one spiritual father. And this church is blessed with a great spiritual father. If you were, come on, I said this church is blessed with a great spiritual father. Let's give it up for Pastor Arango. If you are not here this morning for Christian training, y'all need to go back and watch it. We know that Pastor brings a lot of good messages and a lot of great Bible studies, and sometimes he just comes up here and drops in the Hope Diamond. This morning it was one of those Hope Diamond messages. He taught about the Ten Commandments for Fathers. 
And he talked from his heart. He talked about his life experience because he's not a novice. He's raised two great children, and he's done a great job raising them. They are now adult children. And this past year, he actually is going to become a grandpa now. So we want to honor our spiritual father. There are so many words that we could go on and on to honor you, Pastor, but words can't express it. It's just the love and the action of following you and trying to do that what you've instructed us to do. Because the Bible's right. There's many teachers out there, but there's only one spiritual father, and that's you. So we'd like to honor you. We've got a gift here for you today. And just want to say we love you, Pastor. Happy Father's Day, and God bless you. Yeah, I know. 
to Brother Farmer, I told him, I said, you know, traditionally, Father's Day is the lowest Sunday of the whole entire year. 
the attendance on Father's Day is the lowest every year. But I think we got a good crowd here today. Amen. Praise God. Well, the farmer said, man, they, uh, what's up with that? I mean, they, Father's Day, they don't show up. Amen. We don't get the respect we, we ought to. But let me tell you, uh, I think we defy that today. Amen. Praise God. It's so good to be home. Amen. Thank you for letting me get away for a few, uh, a few days. Praise God. And, uh, and uh, what a superb job our ministerial team did while I was away. Amen. And I'm so proud of them, Brother Jordan, Brother Axel, Brother McSherry, Brother uh, Dane, and Brother uh, Jamal, and amen, did it all, did a great job. That's the way it ought to be. Amen. Praise God and sure. And thank you all for working with them and getting behind them. Amen. Father's Day, what a special day this is. I thank the Lord for the opportunity to be a father. I've got uh, two wonderful children that the Lord has allowed me to father, and I thank God for them. And uh, also, I, uh, I'm also a father figure to many young adults here as well. And, uh, and a father figure to many here at the Peninsula Pentecostals, and, and uh, I love you all. Some of you, of you are, some of you are my spiritual sons and daughters, and we shall sure love you all dearly and thank God for you. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. I say God is so good. Tonight we are not having church, uh, but it's not it's so that you can spend time with your family. All right, spend time with your family. It's not a time to. Uh, do anything else but family time and so um, <clears throat> praise God um, uh, just take advantage of this time that you have to spend time with your family also just want to mention that next Sunday everybody say next Sunday next Sunday we are beginning a series called God Built Series and you will not want to miss that series Amen. I'm going to kick it off next Sunday, and you will not want to miss that. It's going to help you to have a God-built walk with God. How to, how to have a walk with God that is God-built. And uh, it's going to give you a lot of insight. It's going to help you. It's going to motivate you to... Allow yourself to be a God-built child of God. And so you don't want to miss that. Amen. And praise God. So anyway, good to be home. Let's go to the word of the Lord. John chapter 14. Amen. John chapter 14 and verse number uh, 6. We don't have church tonight, so that means I can take two hours. Some of you are already getting nervous. I'll try to be as quick as possible. Hey Amen. I got a unique message for you today, one that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I don't know, it just didn't, didn't uh, quite feel it, but kind of feel it for today. John chapter 14, verse number six, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through If you had known you would have known my also. And from now on, you will know and have seen him. 
Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it will suffice us. Somebody say, show us the Father. And it will suffice us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Do, not, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Somebody say that with me. The Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What is that name? Jesus. If you ask anything in my name, anything. Anything means anything. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son. Notice that it is a big S. son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name what is his name Jesus shall be called wonderful Jesus shall be called Jesus shall be called the mighty God and Jesus should be called Jesus shall be called the everlasting father yep and Jesus shall be called the Prince of Peace. So I'm going to title my message on this thought, and that is, Show Us the Father. Show Us the Father. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity we have today to declare the word of the Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the people of God that have gathered here uh, this morning to hear the word of the Lord on this Father's Day. And we pray, God, that we will see and know the Father. The Philip says, show us the Father, and it will suffice us. We ask today, Lord, that, Lord God, we will, Lord, see the Father. Because we need to know who the real Father is. And give us understanding and knowledge, Lord God, to appreciate, amen, the Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. You turn to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, you may be seated. Some of, our, some of you already know the drill and you already sat down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So good to have all of our guests with us. Can we give our guests a great hand? Amen. Amen. Josh and Rebecca, good to see you all. Hallelujah. Congratulations.
Congratulations, men. It's Father's Day. Amen. But enjoy it while you can. Because as every man in here knows, in the long run, you can't win. I read a humorous, and I want to say humorous, article saying that, saying that very thing. It says, why men can't win. So ladies, if you would just indulge us for a few minutes <laughs> while I read this, okay? If you put a woman on a pedestal and try to protect her from the rat race, you are a male chauvinist. If you stay home and do the housework, then you're a pansy. If you work too hard, there's never any time for her. And if you don't work enough, you're a good-for-nothing bum. If she has a boring, repetitive job with a low pay, this is exploitation. And if you have a boring, repetitive job with low pay, you should get off your duffs and find something better. If you get a promotion ahead of her, that's favoritism. If she gets a job ahead of you, it's equal opportunity. If you mention how nice she looks, it's sexual harassment. If you keep quiet, it's male indifference. If you cry, you're a wimp. And if you don't, you're an insensitive jerk. If you make a decision without consulting her, you're controlling. And if she makes a decision without consulting you, she's a liberated woman. If you ask her to do something she doesn't enjoy, that's domination. If she asks you, it's just a favor. If you try to keep yourself in shape, you're in vain. And if you don't, you're a slob. If you buy her flowers, you're after something. And if you don't, you're not thoughtful. If she has a headache, she's tired. And if you have a headache, you just don't love her anymore. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Enjoy while you can. Today we celebrate Father's Day and honor fathers young and old. And I want to talk about the most impar important father of all. And help us understand exactly who he is. The Bible does show us just who the Heavenly Father is. There is much confusion through the years about who the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost really are. Are there three separate beings, three manifestations? Is God one in three or three in one? I want to tell you today who our Heavenly Father really is. He is Jesus Christ. But if Jesus the Son, but is Jesus the Son or is He the Father? Or is He both? Dr. David Bernard in his excellent work, The Oneness of God, explained John 3.16 where Jesus was called the only begotten Son of God. He said the word begotten is a form of the verb beget, which means to procreate, to father, to sire. Thus, begotten indicates a definite point in time, the point at which conception takes place. By definition, 
the begetter or the father always must come before the begotten, the offspring. There must be a time when the begotter exists and the begotten is not yet in existence. And there must be a point in time when the act of begetting occurs. Page 103, in case you want to check me. The word eternal is not applied to the Son of God in the Scriptures. The term Son of God refers to the humanity of Jesus, to God being manifested in flesh. When the angel announced to Mary the name and the source of her first child, he referred to Jesus in the future sense. In the future sense, shall be. His name shall be, not in the pre-existence eternal state, as recorded in Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Matthew and Luke explicitly detail the human origin of Jesus. And Mary was of the tribe of Judah and the house of David. And Jesus was made like unto his brethren, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. He was made of woman under the law, Galatians 4 and 4. Before his birth, the Son of God existed only in the mind and the plan of God. John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the wo Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So today, I want to preach about the eternal Father. I want you to know who your Father is. I don't want, to leave, don't want anybody to leave here today not knowing who your Father really is. Amen. He, we got a heavenly father. And you need to know who he is. And you need to know where it fits in, your, in the word of God, in your doctrine. You need to know your eternal father. Who came to us in his son as Isaiah prophesied. Only when we accept the work of the son. Listen to me. When you, we accept the work of the Son, or we, are work, we, we accept the work of Jesus, the Son of God, can we really understand how Isaiah's child could also be the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace? Because Jesus is the everlasting Father. This doctrine causes the devils to tremble. And so I know that I am coming against spiritual powers right now. Because the Bible says the devil knows there's one God and they tremble. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so today I am going to highlight who really is your heavenly father. Because ladies and gentlemen, you have the scripture right Amen. To praise him as uh, your father. And you need to understand uh, that he is not just one person uh, in some type of triune Godhead. Uh, no, uh, you need to know uh, that your father uh, is Jesus. And I'm going to prove that to you today. Amen. I want you to know who he is. Because there's a lot of misconception out there. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called 
wonderful counselor, the mighty God, and the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. The scripture clearly declares that there is but one God. Come on, let me just say that again. Is anybody here? Is my mic on? Can I get some hallelujahs on that one? The scripture clearly declares uh, there is but one God. Amen. And the Hebrews were to worship only one God according to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. And the scripture refers to God as the Holy One. The Holy One of Israel according to Psalm 71 verse 22, 78 and 41, Isaiah 1 and 4, Isaiah 4, 5 and 19, and Isaiah 5, 24. There is one and is the Holy One, but never a holy three or never a holy multitude, but there is one God. I said there's one God. This one God is an effort to communicate and interact with mankind. It has expressed himself in a variety of ways. Among the ways that he has chosen to show himself is in his roles as Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 says, God who has sundry times and in many or divers manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. You see, God is the father of humanity since he created the human race according to Malachi 2 and 10. God's relationship with the nation of Israel was as a father to his children. God planned that they should be his chosen people. He provided for their needs and he protected them from danger that threatened their existence. You see, God is uh, not only the Father by His creative action, according to Jeremiah 32, verse 17 and 19, but is also the Father of His Son through the virgin birth, according to Luke 1, 35. God, the Father, is eternal, but the Son of God is not eternal, for He was born in a particular moment in time. Galatians 4 and 4 says, but when the fullness of time was come, God, amen, sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. You see, the term father reveals a relationship between God and his creation. The scriptures state that God made mankind in his image and likeness and breathe into man the breath of life that makes the off, that makes us the offspring of God with the birth of Jesus the son of God God became the father of the son of God and the relationship is now between is not between two gods for there is only one God. The relationship is truly between God, the Father, and His Son, which was born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father. And the uniqueness of this relationship is in the incarnation. For in Jesus, the Son of God, dwells all the fullness of God. Colossians 2 and 9 says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness. For in Jesus Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. If you would just pay close attention and follow my thought pattern, you're going to have a deeper appreciation for the Godhead, but also you're going to have a deeper appreciation for your eternal Father. 
and that when you come to pray, amen, you can come like Jesus taught his disciples to come. Our Father, which thou art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And you're going to have a deep appreciation for your Father. I don't want to bog you down with too much theology today, especially on Father's Day, but I think we need to know exactly who the Father really is. And I want to express that today. I want you to know, amen, before you leave this place, who really is the Father. God, Jesus is not only fully human, but also fully deity. He was both man and God united in one person and personality. As God manifested in flesh, Jesus it is rightfully called a child is born, a son is given, and the mighty God, the everlasting Father in the same verse. He is correctly called a son, uh, the son born of a virgin, and Emmanuel being interpreted God with us. 2 Corinthians 5 and 19 says, to wit, that God was in Christ, uh, reconciling the world unto himself. You see, the title Son of God does uh, refers to God manifested in flesh. As a human, the Son was born, grew from a baby into manhood, increasing in wisdom and stature and in the favor of God and man, according to Luke 5.52. As the son of God, he lived like a man, being tempted to weary, hungry, and limited in knowledge and power. As the son of God, he died, was raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, and was exalted in power and glory. But Jesus was more than the human son of God. He was also God incarnate. The deity, the Father Him, also dwelled in His fullness, in Him. Hallelujah. The flesh of the Son was not homogenized, uh, was not homogenized with divinity. Each was distinctly in identifiable. As a, son, as a man and in His flesh, the Son of God was hungry, tired, tempted, and through his sacrificial death, he atoned for our sins and affected our reconciliation to himself, God. And since he was both God and man, he could be the one mediator between the, uh, between, uh, uh, the one God and all who call upon his name. Uh, according to 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man cries Jesus. As a sinless man, Jesus uh, Christ's death on Calvary made provision for mankind reconciliation with God. If he had not been fully man, he could not reconcile us to God, according to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 18. If he had not been fully God, he could not have saved us, according to the same scripture. That's why the scripture refers to Jesus as the man who reconciled us to God and also as God to whom we are reconciled. I hope you stay with me. I hope this is not too much for you. Hallelujah. We're going to get somewhere. Second Corinthians 5.19 To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 and 14 calls him the great God, our Savior Jesus Christ, the man who gave himself for us that he may redeem us unto himself. 
Thomas was not mistaken to address and worship Jesus as my Lord and my God. And neither are we mistaken when we worship him as the one true God manifested in his fullness of deity in flesh. And today, just in the day, as in the days of the apostles, we do not err when we are baptized in the name of Jesus rather than repeat the titles of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For Jesus is the saving name of God. And there is salvation in any, no other God and in no other name than Jesus because Jesus is the everlasting Father. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We're not confused. We know who the real father is. Hallelujah. But let me go a little further and say that the Holy Ghost is the father in us. And this Jesus, the everlasting father is also the Holy Ghost, uh, the Father in us. Uh, Jesus used the term comforter to describe one of the functions of the Holy Spirit in uh, the New Testament church. Uh, John 14, 26 says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things uh, and bring all things to your remembrance uh, whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh, John 4, 15, 26 says, but the comforter, somebody say, the comforter is come who I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth who proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. You see, Jesus Christ is himself the comforter to which he referred. For he said in John 14, 17 and 18, you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you and I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you Woo. I hope there is revelation I hope you're understanding I hope you're mentally engaging with me I hope you're not worried about dinner right now the same Greek word uh, paralik, uh, pa paralita uh, which is translated comforter in John chapter 14, verse 26, is also used in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1, where Jesus is called our para, uh, paraclete, uh, translated here as our advocate. So the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ. And when, we're re when we receive the Holy Ghost, born of the Spirit, we become the sons of God. And we are adopted into the household of God. Because Romans 5, uh, 8 and 15 says, For uh, you did not receive the Spirit of adoption again to fear but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. It is the spirit that bears witness with your spirit that we are the children of God. And therefore, amen, we can, we, we can call upon God as our Abba, Father. You see, to receive the Holy Ghost is to receive Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God in his power and in his glory. The Holy Ghost is our Father. It is by one Spirit that we are born into one body, according to 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. So there is a fictional story about a king who wanted to know how his subjects lived. So he disguised himself in a 
peasant clothes and visited with them. And, and, and what separated him from his people was position and wealth. God also was separated from his creation by position and wealth. In his position, God stands alone with no par parallels, no equal, no peers. Isaiah wrote in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24, that God made all things and stretched forth the heavens alone. God is unmatched in his Supreme wealth, since he is the builder and maker of all things and thereby holds the title deed to the universe. He is the landlord. We are his tenants. You see, God's ownership of all things grants to him the ultimate authority. He has unrestricted power to do as he pleases. He is Sovereign. He's a sovereign God. On Father's Day, can what we can uh, give to one who who owns everything? What can we give to God who owns everything on this Father's Day? Everything that we are, everything we have, everything we hold was given to us by God. Nothing emphasizes a poverty like God's holiness. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not here because of your talent, your money, your good looks, your charisma. You are here by the goodness and the power of God. Hallelujah. He is all supreme. Hallelujah. When you look back in your life, you know how he orchestrated things in your life to bring you to where you are. Why? Because he's a sovereign God. He is almighty. Oh, you're not here by your own. You are here because God, who is the all-wise God, the sovereign God, brought you to this place. Amen. We owe him our everything. Such a spiritual, such a great spiritual distance exists between God and mankind, which is why the primary role of the Son of God was to reconcile God and man. In John chapter 14, Jesus said to his disciples, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Verse 7, Philip, however, responded, Lord, show us the Father and it will suffice us. Jesus then stated clearly the most revealing statement of his identity as the Father incarnate. He said in John 14, 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Hallelujah. And thou sayest, thou showest the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He does the works. From this passage, we learn that Jesus, the Father manifested in flesh, can be preached and yet not understood or believed. Amen. It is an error to search for the Father outside of Jesus Christ. To really know Jesus Christ is to know him as the Son of God, but also as God, the Father in the Son. Woo! Hallelujah. 
I want you to know who he is. Jesus as a man prayed over the five loaves of bread and two fish. He blessed them, he broke them and gave to the disciples to feed the multitude. But it was the father or the deity in flesh that multiplied the bread and the fish in the disciples' hand. Jesus said it was the father in him that was doing the works. Our heavenly father is more than our creator and savior. He is also a provider. I said he's also a provider, just like a father provides for his children. Amen. It is his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Let me tell you, you can go as a child will go to his father and ask for of him. So can we go to our father? You've got a right as a son of God. You've got a right, amen, to to pull on him on his coattail and say, Father, will you provide for this? Will you provide for that? Let me tell you, you don't have to doubt or pout or do without. You've got a heavenly father that wants to give you the kingdom, that wants to bless you, and you don't need to feel hesitant about it. You just need to go to the throne and say, Father, provide me because He loves you and he wants to provide for you. Many times we come to this altar thinking that God, uh, we got to really try hard, uh, amen, to get this uh, or what we need. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, you need to get a revelation uh, that God uh, is your father uh, and he loves you uh, and he cares for you. Uh, We uh, that are evil know how to give good gifts uh, to our children. Uh, How much more will your heavenly father give good things to them uh, that ask him? uh, So I don't know what kind of need you brought in this place today. You've got a father on this Father's Day to go boldly to the throne of grace and say, God, heal me, bless me, help me with this situation because he's a heavenly father. Hallelujah. You can come to him as a child comes to his earthly father for daily needs. And God provided manna daily for the people of Israel in the wilderness wanderings. So he will provide our needs as we journey through life. As a father, he delights to provide for us according to Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. And I wish I could read your scriptures, but it would make my, my message too long. Amen. Jesus told the parable of the prodigal son to teach us the loving care of a heavenly father that that our heavenly father has for us. The wayward son left home with his inheritance and soon it, uh, he spent it all in sinful pursuits. When broken in spirit and repented in heart, he returned to the father's house to work as a servant. His father ran to him. Hey Amen. This is the only time in scripture that, you, that we see God running to us. Can I tell you, I don't know what your need is today, but God is a God. Though he created the heavens and the earth, though he hung the heart, the stars upon nothing, though he turned this earth into its axis, God, our Father, will run to you. He will run if you ask him. Hallelujah. His Father ran to him and welcomed him and forgave him and restored him as his son. According to Luke chapter 15, you can read all about it. And every generation, this story has reminded backsliders that there is a way home to God for them. Thank the Lord. And through the incarnation, Jesus, amen, God, our Father, experienced 
our temptations and weaknesses. As a man, Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15, our Savior was tempted of the devil in the wilderness. He was tempted by the people to be an earthly king. He was tempted by his disciples and his family to accept a human interpretation of his ministry. He refused the cries of his flesh, the desire to avoid the cross, to escape the bitter cup that he was to drink since he suffered. He knows how to assist us in our trials. Since he suffered, he knows how to assist us in our tribulations. Since he suffered, he knows how to save us from our temptations. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not so high and mighty the Bible says, no, we have a high priest, amen, that is touched by the infirmities, hallelujah, that we feel. You may be feeling today that you're not worthy. You may be feeling guilt and shame because of something you've, not, you've done. Can I tell you, i got a God that is touched by the feelings of your infirmities. He knows where you're at. He's been there. He's been, hallelujah, rejected and despised of man he knows he was tempted he was also in trials and tribulations some church people still refuse to accept Jesus as God the father manifested in flesh and it was true during Jesus' earthly ministry among the Jews when Jesus told them I and the father are one in John 10 and verse 30, they took stones to, uh, and, and began to throw him and to stone him. He said, uh, for blasphemy and because th that thou being a man makest thyself God. He was God manifested in the flesh. They just didn't know that. And they thought that he was being, uh, 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 he was being cocky, that he was being extra that he was being more than what he really was but no in him was God almighty in him was the father in all the fullness of the Godhead dwell bodily in Jesus Christ and when he said I and the father are one he was telling the truth they understood what he proclaimed to be God in the flesh, not merely one with purpose. You see, in Dr. Bernard's book, he states, as a man, Jesus was one with the Father in the same, in the sense of unity of purpose, mind, and will, according to John 17, 22. As God, Jesus is one with the Father in the sense of identity with the Father. In the sense that he is the Father, John 10, 30 and John 14, 9. Jesus said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. John 12, 44 and 45. In other words, if a person recognizes Christ's divinity, he is seeing the Father. John 10, 38. Jesus told Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how and, and that and now sayest thou, show us the Father. John 14, 9. The, the Father is a spirit. And no man has seen him. 1 Timothy 6, 15, John 1, 18. The glory of God is seen, however, in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. It was the only begotten son's responsibility to declare unto uh, declare him unto us. Uh, no man knoweth uh, who the father is but the son uh, and to whom the father will reveal him. Luke 10, 22. Uh, how, what, why do so many 
people not understand this. The problem is not in the biblical revelation of the Father in Jesus, but the blindness of man-made traditions that blind people just as the Jewish tradition blinded the Jews. So in conclusion, Jesus told his disciples in John 14, 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The everlasting father, which is Jesus, has not abandoned us as orphan children, but as our father, he comes to us in the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh yes, he doesn't work as a father in that economy anymore, nor in the son, but he's still the father in the spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, if you get the spirit, you get the spirit of the father. Hallelujah. Amen. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive the promise of the Father, Acts 2.33. We also know that our Father clothed the lilies of the field and feeds the sparrow. He cares for us. Your heavenly Father knoweth what you have need of, of, of these things. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, God knows exactly what you are needing right now. And he is our Father. Uh, and he comes to us through his spirit. Uh, and if you have need of him, uh, you can come boldly to him uh, and say, Oh, Father, uh, my Abba, Father, uh, I have need of this. Uh, and it is his good pleasure. Uh, hallelujah. Through his spirit. Uh, if we are not good, by, if we who are good by nature know how to give good gifts uh, to our children, how much more does a good God uh, know how to give good Good gifts, amen, good things to those who come to him. Hallelujah. Did he not say in Philippians 4 and 19, it's not just a motivational statement. It's just not a phrase. It is the word of God. You can bang on it. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his words shall stand forever. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Did he not say in Philippians 4 and 19, but my God, so hallelujah, my God, my Father shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. You see, the revelation of Jesus Christ as the everlasting Father is an unfolding revelation of the redemptive plan of God. The scriptures carefully depict God as Father in creation. Before creation, he had a plan, the word by which he created all things. In the fullness of time, a child was born, a son was given. He was called the mighty God, the everlasting Father. God and the Father was manifested in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus lived an authentic human life, but but also the fullness of deity dwells in him. And by receiving the spirit of Jesus Christ, oh, the spirit of Christ, the gift of the Holy Ghost, we have access to the Father. I said you have access to the Father. Let me tell you, this, if, you have, if you receive the Holy Ghost, you have access to the Father today. The same Spirit that enables us to call God our Father. Hallelujah. To know Jesus is to know the Father. For no man can come to the Father except by Him. Today, Jesus not only wants to know you, He wants you to know Him. He, who he is, he is the everlasting father. The greatest father in the world is accessible through Jesus Christ. And you can access him by the gift 
of the Holy Ghost and by being baptized in his name. Make no mistake about it. There is one God and Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. Yes, you can, you may or may not be blessed with a great natural father, but in the spirit realm, you can have an everlasting father. And ladies and gentlemen, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you have access to the Father. He will not only be a provider, but he will be your protection. Hallelujah. And he's not going to let nothing happen to you. Amen. He will be your shield and your buckler. He will be your protection. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because you got the Father all around you. He's protecting you. Oh yes. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, God is going to rise up a standard against him. Why? Because he's my protection. Hallelujah. Devil, you got to get through the Father before you get to me. Hallelujah. But you get the Father when you get the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I don't know who needs the Father. I don't know who needs access to the Father today but you can have it uh, through Jesus Christ, uh, through his spirit. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, we got a good father. I said, we got a good father. He's the Abba father. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you ought to be proud. Uh, you are a son and a daughter uh, of the everlasting God. Uh, and if you got the Holy Ghost, uh, you can come to him uh, and say, Father, uh, I need you. Uh, father, uh, Hallelujah. I need you to work here. I need this. I need that. Why? Because uh, he will give good things to him. To them that call upon his name. Will you stand to your feet right now? Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I went through the scripture and I went to describe to you what kind of father we have. And how you can access him. Will you put your, your, your hands in the air right now? Hallelujah, and worship your good father. Come on, on Father's Day, on Father's Day, we come to honor the father of all fathers. Hallelujah, on this Father's Day, we come. Lord God, I have done my very level best to explain this congregation who you are. You are the everlasting father. Hallelujah, and we got access Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you need access to the Father and you need the Holy Ghost, why don't you run up here and God's going to fill you with His Spirit because it's, He wants to give you good things. If you need the Holy Ghost, why don't you run up here right now and say, Father, I need you. I need access to you. If you need the Holy Ghost today, Hallelujah. Why don't you step out from where you are? Hallelujah. 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 What about those of you that you have a need right now? You have a need and you thought it was difficult for, to get access to God. Hallelujah. It's not that difficult. All you got to do is ask him. Hallelujah. And you have a need that you need God to intervene in. Why don't you step out from where you are and come up to this altar area and raise your hands and cry, Abba, Father. I'm my Abba, Father. Come on, you can come boldly to the throne of grace.